Listen, it's quite simple. Press the free like button if you think that Tony Khan is the worst boss in wrestling history. There is no reason why Ortiz and Santana are no longer a tag team who get along. That's wild. Listen, when it came to the Rockers, yeah, the Rockers did not get along outside of the ring. But they still were a tag team until Shawn Michaels was ready to be a singles guy. It's like, bro, you got to force these guys to be a tag team. It's best for business. You got to be a boss. It's like, yes, they are not on good terms, but who cares? They are a tag team. You got to force them to be a tag team. Or, man, I feel bad for Ortiz and Santana, man, because I felt like they were a top three tag team when they were in Impact Wrestling. When they were... LAX. They were a great tag team, man. I felt like they had tons of potential. I felt like they should have went to the WWF. They should have went to NXT. Maybe we wouldn't be in this situation if they would have went to NXT. You see, Tony Khan has no control over his locker room. Hence why CM Junk got himself fired. Because he has no control over his locker room. There's no way in hell that Triple H would let these guys feud. A tag team within a tag team feuding against each other even though they're a tag team. Triple H would have sat these guys down and worked things out. Tony Khan is an awful boss. I'm like, why are you letting your tag team beef with each other on social media? This is what pisses me off about Tony Khan. It's like, don't let these guys resolve it on their own. You are their boss. You got to sit these guys down. They are a tag team. You, you signed them as a tag team, not as singles guys. You signed them to make an impact for your tag team division. And from what I'm hearing, that these guys, they haven't talked in the past 14 months that's insane i heard that i heard that ortiz has not talked to santana about his leg in the past 14 months so it's crazy it's been like a year and some change and still these guys are still not on talking terms that's wild it's like Tony Khan, man, really dropped the ball on the proud and powerful. It's like, man, these two guys are not even on the fight forever video game. That's crazy because these two guys were day one guys. But it's like maybe like if, if Tony Khan would have gave these guys instant success right out the gate, maybe when we wouldn't be in this situation. Because these two guys were supposed to be the Usos of all elite wrestling. But for some strange reason, Tony Khan, man, didn't see it. So it gets to a point where, what the fuck did Chris Jericho do for the Powder Power for Nothing. It's like, he ain't do a damn thing. It's like, Chris Jericho, I don't get it. He don't elevate nobody. It is just a glorified ego stroke when it comes to his factions. Because nobody gets elevated. Sammy G, Jack Swagger, nobody got elevated being with Chris Jericho, which is crazy. Hell, at least Roman Lames can say, well, at least Jay Uso got elevated. At least he can say that. At least, like, holy shit. But... How can you not talk to your tag team partner after a whole year and he went down with an injury? So it gets to a point where, okay, who's the real bad guy? Hell, to me, that sounds like that sounds like Ortiz might be the bad guy. Because, dude, your tag team partner blew out his fucking knee. It's like, man, you got to check up on him, man. You got to let bygones be bygones after that. That put things in perspective. But damn, you still did talk to him? 
So their most recent match, dang, they still were not on speaking terms. That's a sign that they might never be on speaking terms. If if these two guys were forced to team up and they still were not on talking terms, that's crazy. But Tony Cobb, man, dropped the ball on the proud and powerful. These two guys should have been your tag team champions in year one. It's like, man, it's like out of all the talent on the roster, he dropped the ball on them the most, like, like the hardest. Do you realize how good these two guys were in Impact Wrestling? They were a top three tag team in the whole entire world. That's wild. Because why would you push the fucking Lucha Bros over the Proud and Powerful? Hell, I like the Proud and Powerful way better than the fucking Lucha Bros. Because at least, at least Proud and Powerful can speak proper English without it being broken. They don't need a fucking manager. It's like, man, they could have been their Usos. But... Like I said, they should have went to NXT. Triple H wouldn't allow these guys to feud off camera. But I do know how they feel. Because I used to have a best friend, I would say about two years ago. Um, He was a real best friend of mine. It's like we were best friends ever since we were 12 years old. And we stopped being best friends once he became a fucking simp for a woman. And I'm like, this is what pissed me off. This fucking clown told me to, to simmer down on our X-rated conversations. Like, we always had those deep rated R conversations about our lives. And he said that we couldn't talk about those kind of conversations through texting because this idiot said that him and his girl now share a phone, even though she has her own phone. This dumbass gave his woman access to his phone, which means he didn't allow me to talk about certain topics now because his woman has access to his phone. I'm like, why the fuck would you do that? Look here, man. I would never in my life have a woman even touch my phone. Fuck having access. Bitch, you ain't touching it. I don't want to see your prints on my phone whatsoever. You ain't touching it. Hell, I don't want you looking at it, okay? I don't want you knowing what my fucking screen server looks like. You would never touch my phone, let, let alone have access to it. That's called simp shit. Any guy who gives his woman his password to his phone or has any access to his phone or allows her to read his texts, you are a fucking simp. That's like, that's that cuck shit. That's that cuck shit to the max. And that pissed me off. So I say, you know what, bro? I'm done with you. If me and you can't have you know, average conversations about our lives that we're going through. Like I was trying to, I was trying to have him give me advice about a woman that I was smashing at the time. So it was those kind of conversations, you know, saying, so, you know, private, personal conversations with your best friend that we all have. I couldn't have those conversations. He didn't allow me to have them because his girl had access to his phone. I'm like, why? Like, why the fuck would you do that? So it was like, it was pointless. So what's the point of us being best friends if, if men you can't have personal convos through texting on your fucking phone? Are you a fucking simp? Like, so by his, by his logic, he chose his new woman over his best friend of damn near 25 plus years. Let that sink in. Okay, that's the point I'm trying to make. So, 
I do have experience of no longer having a best friend who went AWOL. Listen, still to this day, it still bothers me. Still to this day, I don't know how he's doing. I haven't talked to him in two years. So, you know why? Fuck him. Like, why would you give your woman access to your phone to a point where you don't want to have personal conversations with your best friend who you do longer because your woman has access to your phone now so we can't have private rated R conversations about our lives not anymore over a fucking woman yeah bitch you a simp you don't choose a woman over your best friend that's not how life works you will pay for it in the long run listen you and your best friend can stop being best friends for numerous reasons. But on top of that list, you and your best friend should never stop being best friends over a woman ever in life. That's a huge no, no. That's a sip shit because your woman can leave you anytime she wants, but your best friend will always be your best friend. So I have experience about not having a best friend anymore and not being on talking terms with them. So I know how Ortiz and Sertana feels. But I blame Tony Khan, man. It's his fault. It's like, why would you have one of your top tag teams not be friends? It's like Vince wouldn't allow it. Triple H would not allow it. It's like, you need control over your locker room. And it's crazy because most most likely these two guys would never be tag team champions. Like, why? Why would you make them tag team champions if they don't get along in real life? It's crazy because, like, man, they should have been tag team champions years ago. They should have been the Usos. Because I felt like they were the Usos of Impact Wrestling. That's why I wanted them to go to NXT. I knew it was a huge mistake that these two dudes chose all elite wrestling over NXT. Because Triple H, this is what I heard. Triple H wanted to bring them in to NXT. But they chose fucking all elite wrestling, which was bad in hindsight. Awful choice. Um, it gets to a point where maybe, look, I think Santana has more upside than Ortiz as a singles guy. I feel like, man, I wish Santana was in fucking NXT. I feel like he has huge upside as a singles. But it's crazy. How can two tag team partners not talk to each other for two years no no not my bad almost two years really <laughs> that's wild and they should have strike while the iron was hot these two guys should have been tag team champions in year one of all elite wrestling it's Tony Khan man's fault that's it I'm done